Hello, in this video, you will learn how to create 2D animations within the new Blender 2.8. Blender 2.8 has now added drawing and 2D animation tools into its pipeline. So this makes Blender possibly the best free software right now for 2D animation work. Why? Well, now it's possible to actually create cartoons. In fact, the Blender Foundation is going to be proving this by actually making a full 2D animation movie called Hero within Blender 2.8. We can now interact 2D elements with 3D elements. I don't know of any other 2D animation software that can actually do this. Before I go ahead and start 2D animation, we need to look at the drawing tools that are available in the new Blender 2.8. So, the first thing you might have noticed when you open up your new Blender 2.8 interface is uh, this little pencil object over here. Uh, you might be thinking this is probably a good starting place to start doing 2D animation. Well, not quite. The annotate tool is a little bit different to the grease pencil tool, which is the actual tool we'll be using to do 2D animation. So big difference between annotate and grease pencil. Grease pencil is the one where you will do the actual 2D animation. Annotate is simply just to make markers and pointers. So for example, I can make a point, say, work on this. I'm actually using a uh, digital drawing tablet with a pen. So even then my handwriting is not the best, but in real life my handwriting is not that great either. So please bear with me on that one. Um, so you can make little pointers like this. And you also have these other tools. If you hit the N key on your keyboard, or if you just click the uh, plus uh, sign over there, you can click under annotations and uh, do some other little customizations like change the color, but that's really about as far as you can go. Um, sorry if I go to this one, I can keep blue. Um, send to manager. This is purely just for making notes. If you're working within a team, uh, on a project or if you're working yourself on a relatively larger project and you want to make notes here and there then the annotation tool is pretty useful for that. It's a basic tool just to make pointers and markers um, on your 3D scene and then when you rotate around you'll notice it's just a 2D plane on that. That's about as far as this tool goes. Very very basic. This annotate tool will be pretty useful if you're working on a film project or a game project or even an architectural type of project. So that's about it. That is that is the annotation tool. Uh, it's a very basic tool. You can't really um, customize the look of this or anything like that, uh, or you can't even animate it. But you can do all of that with the grease pencil tool. So if I just close this for a second, I'll leave the annotate tool open, but I'll just move it to the side, okay? And let's just put the 3D cursor somewhere over here. Okay, so the grease pencil. Uh, if I hit Shift A, or if I go to Add, the same thing, I can go under Grease Pencil, and I can choose one of these three options to start drawing. Uh, if I choose Blank, I can literally start drawing from, uh, well, pretty much from scratch. So I can just start drawing whatever I like. I drew that with a mouse, by the way. If I choose, for instance, um, Stroke, we have a predefined stroke already set out for us. So uh, we can continue to work on that. And I can also choose a third one, which is monkey. Just like we have the 3D Suzanne monkey, which is Blender's mascot, uh, we now have the 2D version as well. So it just goes on to show that Blender is taking 2D drawing and animation more seriously. Okay, so yeah, these are just good starting points for you to start drawing in Blender 2.8. So uh, let's go ahead now and look at how to actually draw. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are actual objects and you can treat them like any other objects in Blender. So you can right click this one and you can grab by pressing G to move around, rotate. You can also do the same with these tools over here. So you can scale it. Um, and do whatever you like with it. So you can pretty much treat it like uh, its own 3D object, which is why I said Blender 2.8 is probably the best software for 2D animation and drawing because we can do customizations with it as well. Another thing you might not have noticed is uh, if you can, if I just right click, select that one, I can tab into edit mode 
and in edit mode I can select any point of the drawing that I want and then I can pretty much move it anywhere. So pretty cool, easily adjustable and we can treat it pretty much like a 3D object. Now that we have looked at that I can now go ahead and just delete this because we don't need them and I guess I can start from scratch again. So shift A, grease pencil, we'll start with blank or even maybe even a stroke. Um, as you can see that the grease pencil object is an actual proper 3D object in Bender. You even see it within the outliner, it's called a stroke, but you don't have to call a stroke again, name it whatever you like. Just, right, just double click it and say my drawing, and that'll be now called your drawing. But the annotate tool is nothing, it's just, uh, you can, I don't know, you can sort of imagine it like putting a sticky note on your, on your 3D project. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Um, yeah. So that's that. So I guess now I can get rid of this uh, annotate tool and I can get rid of all of this stuff as well because we don't need it. So let's remove the annotate tool. Bring out the eraser. So now let's actually start drawing. So once you have your grease pencil object, to actually start drawing, all you need to do is uh, hold control tab on your keyboard. Don't let go yet. Move your mouse up and let go. So now you're in draw mode. Alternatively, you can also change from object mode to a draw mode manually as well. First thing that I wanna do before I start actually drawing is go to the tool panel over here. So one thing you notice is that we're in pencil mode. You can change the type of brush that you want. You can draw by pen or pencil or a noise or a marker, ink or block. And I'm pretty sure in the future there'll be more brushes available to us. But at the moment we have just these ones. Um, you can choose how thick you want your lines to be, the strength of your lines, and things like that. Um, and also you'll notice the material is set to grey.02. So if I start drawing, you notice it filling in the colors for you for some reason even though you don't want it. This is pretty good when you do 2D animation when you actually get used to it. But if you want to start just drawing with the lines, uh, this is probably not the best, uh, best material to use. By default it shows grey.02 for me. But uh, I guess you can choose whatever you like. So if, say for instance, um, you can tell that it's not filled in by just looking at the previews on the side. So if there's transparency, you'll notice that it's just the lines. If there's color with inside them, then you'll notice that it's a filled in color. So now we can start to draw proper lines. Because I'm using a digital pen and tablet, it is taking pressure sensitivity into account. So if I draw light lines, you'll, you, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but you'll see that it's very faint lines. But if I start, uh, you know, putting pressure on my tablet, the lines get thicker and more visible. So that is the basics of how to do drawing. Now you can bring out the inner drawing talent in you and start drawing whatever you like. Uh, if you want to play around with the different colors and materials, you can choose from one of these materials over here. But sometimes you may want to define your own materials. Like in, for example, you, you don't want to have green, you want to have some other kind of color. To do that, just go to the material tab and uh, we can hit plus and just treat it like any other material you would in Blender. So for example, if I choose I want um, uh, uh, an orange color, then now when I use that material, I can pretty much paint in an orange color there. Say I want to have that filled in effect like we had when we first started drawing. Well to do that, maybe I can go over here, choose some over here, okay that one, and remember to change the alpha from zero to one. So we can now start drawing, you know, filled in colors. I didn't show you how to change the thickness. Uh, or uh, you'll notice that the orange line is a bit more thicker. It might not be clear. Let me just draw that. So the orange line is a lot more thicker. So that is the basics of how to set materials for your 2D drawings. Uh, before we start doing 2D animation, let's just have a look at the modifiers that we can apply on our 2D drawing. To add a modifier, just go to the modifiers panel, just click on that one, add a grease pencil modifier, and just choose which, whichever modifier that you want to use for this one. One last thing that I want to show you before we go ahead and do 2D animation is the new effects tab that we have in Blender 2.8. So if I go ahead and click that, we can see we have all these effects that we can play around with. So for example, if I hit blur, we can blur our entire 2D drawing and we can play around with these settings. Now, uh, just like the modifiers panel in Blender, 
uh, the effects tab is non-destructive. That means any change that you make via the effects uh, can later be you know, reversed easily. So it's non-destructive. You can freely play around with these settings to create cool effects to your 2D animations. So colorize, you can make it black and white, you can make it sepia. If you're working on a cartoon scene, for example, and one of the characters in that scene has a flashback moment where they're, where they're thinking about the past, uh, you could you know, play one with a black and white or a sepia tone. Another popular effect is the rim light. So you can fake the, uh, the idea of rim lighting by doing this. I can just play around with these colors and uh, adjust the settings. Add a little bit of a rim light to your scenes. For example, the sun is hitting, for example, to simulate the, uh, the sun hitting an object, you could do that. You can also add a shadow effect. So you're now your drawings has a little bit of a shadow effect. Of course, um, a purple shadow is a bit weird. So you may go with a darker black kind of a shadow. Might go with a more like a more realistic shadow, something like that. Gray, a gray shadow. I don't know, just some ideas to play around with. So yeah, that's about it. That is the basics of the drawing tools that are available in Blender 2.8. So now let's finally go ahead and start doing some 2D animation. So when you open up a new version of Blender, which may be something like this, um, this is not really ideal for 2D animation. Uh, first of all, we don't need the uh, the cube. The camera or even the lighting because that's mostly 3d elements well i guess you need the camera later on we, you will you would actually need the camera if you want to actually render it out in the video but for our cases we don't really care just want to do a quickie next up what you want to do is you want to change the workspace to a 2d animation workspace of course you can also go file new then 2d animation as well to open up this scene over here you can see that we have a white background by default which is ideal for doing 2d animation so this is basically like our canvas it is a 3d world if i just uh, rotate around but we don't need to care about the actual 3d world itself we just want to focus on drawing so let's go ahead now and add in our uh, grease pencil object so shift a uh, let's start off with a stroke um i might hit five to go into uh, orthographic mode that's the same as pressing this um, if I go like this 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 view might not be accurate perspective view may not be accurate it's actually the orthographic view that's accurate so I'm going to draw via the orthographic view and I don't need to see the grid so I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck the grid and I now have an ideal platform to start drawing so now we've set up our 3d viewport as a 2d canvas to start actually drawing we need to sort of look at these two other windows here before we go ahead and do our 2D animation. So over here we have the Dope Sheet, which you may be familiar with if you've done 3D animation in Blender. So it's the exact same concept. You have keyframes. So just in case you're a beginner, uh, these are keyframes. So we have two layers here, which you can see over here, there's two layers. Uh, you can sort of imagine these layers as if it's, uh, as, as if it's like a Photoshop kind of a layer. So you can hide layers, you can show layers and things like that. So you can add layers upon layers of lines and colors and things like that on top of your drawing. Um, and over here we have these little diamonds. So these diamonds are keyframes. So I can select uh, one keyframe per layer or I can uh, select both keyframes by shift, right clicking and selecting like that or alternatively clicking the master keyframe right at the top which will select everything under that line. Okay, so I mean, of course, I didn't really explain what a keyframe is. So to explain it in the most simplest way as possible, a keyframe is simply a marker to indicate what your animation will look like at a specific point on the timeline. So at this point, this is what my drawing will look like. So if I rendered this out as a video, so I can hit play, I can hit pause, and so on. If I rendered this out as a video, at this point in your video, this is what your 2D drawing will look like. That's that's about it. That is a keyframe. And to create a keyframe, it's very, very simple. Just scrub the timeline to wherever you want to draw and simply just start drawing away. Oops, I need to go into draw mode. Control tab and then swipe up. Okay, so on frame 20, I can draw another stroke. 
Oops. Okay, on frame 20, I might choose a black color and I may draw another stroke. As you can see, once I draw this stroke on frame 20, the previous stroke disappears. That's normal. The main reason why this one disappeared is because on this keyframe, we have this stroke over here. And once you create a new keyframe, everything gets erased and we start with a, a blank canvas again. Then you just create new drawings on top of that canvas. So if I go to this frame 40, I can draw something like that. Uh, 60 I can draw something like that now when I play back the animation you can see we've created a very very simple 2d animation simple and easy as that if you want to copy and paste uh, the keyframe so for example on frame 80 if I want to see this image uh, come back again press shift D to duplicate then move your mouse and then just left click there wherever you want to put it actually and then when you press play oh, sorry, press play that original drawing comes back. Very simple and very cool. Of course, you may not be happy with the final timing of the animation. Say, for instance, you want to make it a bit faster. You can move these keyframes closer together. So I can right click and then press G like you would in the 3D viewport and then move it closer. Closer. Um, alternatively, you can, uh, you know, another way I can do it is I can hit uh, B on my keyboard, select all like that. And move the timeline scrub to wherever I want and hit S on my keyboard to scale it down. That's like you would do in the 3D viewport as well. So now when I play back my animation, it's much faster. Now when I play back the animation, it's even faster. But if I scale it up, then um, it's really slow. So you would use the Dope Sheet Editor to control the timing of your 2D animations. So maybe I'll use this time right now to show you in real time how to do a, a quick 2D animation of a bouncing ball. So on frame one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a ball. Um, maybe we'll have this as our ground. Actually, I might do this in two ways. First off, I'm going to get go out of uh, object mode and then I'm going to uh, click over here, somewhere here, use the grease pencil. And then I'm going to hit shift A and start with a... Um, another grease pencil object. So I'm going to say blank for this one. Then I'm going to change this to draw mode. I'm going to go ahead and go to the tool set panel and make this line a bit thicker. We're going to draw the ground. So let's name this as so. So this is a uh, highlight at the moment. So I'm going to change this one and call this one ground. And then I'm going to go to the materials and I'm going to choose the black material over here. And I'm just going to draw a simple ground. Okay, so just draw a straight line just like that. Oops. If you have a digital tablet, I recommend you get that. You can actually even use a ruler on your tablet to get a straight line, but and anyways, I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's select our stroke. And I'm going to call this one our ball. Now that our ground is done, go ahead and uh, select ball. Now with the ball selected, I'm going to go into draw mode. Make sure you're in ball. For this one, I'm going to use the uh, also the same pen, maybe a pencil with a black color and maybe make, make this a bit more thicker. 88 pixels should be fine. And simply just draw a ball on frame one. It's not the best looking ball, but whatever. Then scrub your timeline to frame 10. And then we're going to make it fall down and sort of uh, stretch as it falls down. Something like that. Then on frame 20, I'm going to make it collide with the ground. Then uh, frame 30, make it go back up. Sorry, that's not exactly at the center. Then on frame 40, I just want to, well, I just want to loop, loop back up. So I'm going to sh uh, select the first frame, Shift D, and I don't want to select this keyframe because remember this is the ground, uh, the ground drawing, the ground line that we have over here. Uh, or just to make it more clearer, I think I didn't even call it uh, the correct name. So don't call it G pencil, just call it the ground, and call this one the ball. 
Okay, so for the ground, so we only have one keyframe on the ground and we'll just draw a few keyframes for the ball. Uh, and I want to select this keyframe. For some reason, my original blender, I can't right click and select it. Maybe your version can, but uh, if I use a box tool select, that seems to work fine for me. So hit Shift D and then just move the keyframe over here to bring the original um, drawing back to the end as well. So that when we play it back, so if I just change the end frame to 40, and now I play back the animation, we have a looping, bouncing ball animation. I think the ball is sort of bouncing on an angle, it's sort of coming like this. So I mean that's easy to fix, just go over here, uh, literally go into edit mode, hit A to select everything and just move it a little bit to the side. Play it back now. Oops, uh, I think it's gone too much to the side. Hit A again and maybe move it a little bit here. Okay, so I just went to edit mode at each point and uh, made some fixes, but basically we have this simple bouncing ball animation. So maybe I can draw another version over here. A little bit stretched. Go here. Of course, we can continue to style the, stylize the drawing one even more. Like over here, I can put in these little cartoony lines over here. Uh, so once I add in this little, little cartoony lines like that to simulate the wind, we have a more interesting looking bouncing ball animation. And you can obviously control the timing even further. So over here, uh, uh, I can maybe take this keyframe, duplicate it by pressing Shift D, put it over here and then press uh, Alt A, B, and then select all of those, put, put uh, the timeline scrub in the right middle, scale it down a bit. I'm gonna play it back now. A bit more like a realistic bouncing ball animation. Obviously not the best looking bouncing ball animation or not even the best looking drawing, ever but just to demonstrate the idea that in blender 2.8 in literally 10 minutes i've created a cool little bouncing ball animation using simple keyframes and a, a basic pencil brush I, I highly recommend you grab a 2d drawing tablet initially it'll be quite difficult to learn it's a bit of a learning curve but as you get used to it you will get better so i hope this video has been useful to you and i hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching